little smoky river, you've been good to me. From every fallen timber, be a strong standing tree. Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Dusty Tucker. Um, I realize it's been quite a while since I've made a video. I've been taking a, a, a well-needed break, not just from YouTube, but from everything political-wise. I have stopped listening to everything to do with the uh, um, firearm-related content, everything. I've just taken a break from everything. I've really needed some headspace because I've just been getting way too... Like, I swear, my blood pressure has just shot through the roof, just in constant worry. If when I wake up, is this going to get banned? Is this going to get banned? The best thing I I could do for myself is just not dwell on anything firearm related. And I've needed that break for about a month and a half or whatever. It's been a while. So, um, in this video, uh, we'll consider it a mental health break. <laughs> anyway... Um, in this video, I'm going to be uh, telling you guys a little about um, lead projectiles for the 3030. Um, in this particular case, it's going to be on uh, the gas checks for uh, lead cast bullets. Because if you're like me, you like to save some money. And you don't like to buy all these overpriced loading components and stuff like that. So if you're into the whole lead cast bullet stuff. I just started loading 3030. Um, it's kind of funny because I don't even have a 3030 at this moment, but I do have um, a gunsmith, hopefully, that it's gonna, I'm gonna reach out to uh, in a few months here and get him to build me a rifle using, uh, this will be in a later video, I'll show you guys when it's done, but in here I have a Marlin um, I think it's a Marlin 94 uh, micro groove 3030 barrel and I'm gonna give this to him and he's gonna build me a rifle but I don't want to spoil it so um, it's probably not gonna be done for quite some time so don't expect a video in it anytime soon we're just talking about future stuff and I, I might purchase maybe like a lever action or something like that in the meantime but anyways back to the video so yeah I'm gonna be showing you guys how not how I load them but particular on the um, cast bullet section of this. I might do a whole thing eventually, but this is just going to be on the projectile itself. Uh, a gas checked, um, what do we got? I can't remember. It's like a hundred and hundred and fifty five grain, uh, lead cast bullet for the 3030. And it's got the flat point for a tubular magazine. You, you can find Lyman, um, I guess you can call them Spitzer style bullets or they have a point tip. They're more so for uh, single shots like the gun that I'm going to hopefully get built here is going to be a single shot. And I kind of want to eventually find a uh, uh, more of a Spitzer design than a flat point. This, this would work fine in any like, uh, like a Marlin or a Winchester lever action. This will work perfectly fine. Um, but this this video is going to be specifically on like uh, the gas checking and uh, sizing operation of this. If nobody, um, let's say you're coming into this fresh and you you realize that these uh, these thirty cal projectiles are absolutely ridiculous, overpriced, and don't get me wrong, they are. These are the uh, what do we got here? I think these are the these are the hundred and fifty grain jacketed soft points I kind of wish they were uh, flat nose but they're, they're just round nose I haven't loaded these yet and I will eventually but um, these boxes are going for about $80 or more um, pretty much anywhere right now so I just wanted to buy a box for hunting reasons because I know that they're trying to um, get rid of lead for hunting even though there's still lead in this but it's not nearly as drought whatever whatever you want to call it that's the whole politics and hunting it's completely going south by the way um but yeah those boxes of projectiles are anywhere from 
60 to 100 bucks and don't even try to look for them on <laughs> local auctions because you're going to overpay like apparently there's people that are okay with overpaying on auctions which i don't get but anyways back to the video projectiles on the 3030 the 155 grain uh around those flat points from this this is from a lee single cavity mold that i have in my garage and uh a little casting tip would be uh, use the a correct alloy. So you don't want to use pure lead and you don't want to use um, something way too hard. Like uh, uh, even, even if you're using wheel weights, make sure you get rid of the zinc wheel weights. If you're separating wheel weights, you don't want too much zinc um, in your, in there. Look, it'll, it'll be way too hard of a projectile because it's solid. Um, you don't have a jacket or nothing on it, so you have to worry about that. Um, I I use straight up reclaimed lead from the backstop of a range, so it's probably within spec. It's about ninety percent um, the correct. You know, it might be like off slightly here or there. It might be a little bit too soft or a little bit too hard, but. Realistically, it's going to be, that's what we're talking my mute, like on the millimeter spectrum end of the, the hardness and softness. I always, for just a little tip, I would uh, drop your cast bullets in a uh, cool bucket of water to add extra hardness if from the alloys and stuff inside the lead. It'll kind of help with a better consistency and everything like that if you drop them in cool water. Um, that, that's what I do. And I haven't shot any yet. I'm not going to load too much because I don't want to have to pull 100 bullets. So I've only loaded about five of each each kind. And I've loaded different powder. And I just pretty much have a spectrum of um, different powders and load datas that I've looked out for. And I've also gotten a book. Um, this book I would kind of suggest getting. The Alignment... Uh, cast bullet handbook it's got uh it doesn't have very much data on the 3030 it's only got about a page and a half which is kind of surprising i'm not sure why but yes they favorite lyman in this book um there's the one lee mold that they have is the 155 grain so i got lucky that it's got the right data in there for me but i would definitely suggest getting this book um Especially if you keep referring everything online. If you refer to everything online, if you go to Hodgson's website, um, I've been noticing there hasn't been very many lead uh, bullet data in that website. Um, you, you type in the caliber and the, all the specs that you, you're going to load for, and there is no lead cast bullet option. It's all X-tip, X-tip, jacketed, blah, blah, blah. So that's when I decided to get this book before all the information is gone for lead casting um, and loading. I suggest getting a book. I'm usually not a book guy, but I'm going to be because this information is going to slowly disappear over time. I'd rather have the hard evidence of uh, load data. Anyways, I keep getting off topic. Well, not really, but... Um, so if you're, getting, if you're new to casting and you want to cast a rifle cartridge... Um, but projectile, make sure you get the right diameter bullet. This is a, uh, well, I've been doing a bunch of research and uh, I decided to kind of go with the majority of what everyone else is saying. So for the 3030 um, lead bullets, apparently you want a larger diameter than than the, uh, what the jacketed bullets are. These are 308 diameter. And I'm using them in 3030. And I've looked it up and they, it, it'll be correct for that. But, however, when it comes to the lead projectiles, they are 311. And I'm sizing them to uh, 311. So, there's been people saying 312, uh, 310, 39 whatever but the majority of people are saying that the 311 is the way to go so that's what i'm sticking with out of hopes that uh, the 311 sizer will be fine in a uh in modern or whatever 3030 
um, barrels. So we're gonna find out. And the lube I'm using in the lubricizer is Super Molly, uh, Lyman Super Molly. It's the black looking stuff. It's um, I like it because it flows through the lubricizer without a heat pad. Um, sometimes I'll start with a blow dryer and kind of get the base of it warmed up to kind of get everything flowing. And once it gets flowing, usually I can uh, lube and size hundreds of bullets before I have to worry about kind of doing it again with the hair dryer. It just kind of helps get it a little extra soft, especially when you're using uh, longer projectiles. If I was using little stubby 45s or 38s, it's whatever, no big deal, just run them. But uh, the longer projectile, you have a chance of squishing the bullet down when you're pressing uh, down. If, 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 if the lube is too hard and not soft enough, you can actually push and kind of compress the projectile. And when you compress it, you're gonna stretch it width-wise. It does size it, but you're gonna have an oblong kind of stubby bullet. You're not gonna have consistency with your bullets. So I kind of like to start with a, uh, a kind of, a, I just take a blow dryer and just heat the warm, I just heat the base of the, um, the lubricizer a little bit just to kind of help get the things flowing. Um, so there's a few things you're going to need if you're going to want to use a, a, a sizer. Like, I'll kind of pan down here a little bit. This is the Lyman, uh, I can't remember what model it is, the 4500, I believe. This is another one over here, too. This one's locked in for black powder only. I have my black powder lube and everything on that guy. This is my smokeless stuff. I don't have to, I don't want to have to keep changing the tubes out every time I want to do different uh, um, smokeless or black powder lube. So um, I started with pan lubing with black powder. Um, it, uh, it just got irritating because you can only do so many at a time. You take a, a baking sheet and you, you put in your bullets and then you melt it and then you, you pull them out and then they're, you know, they're lubed. Pan lubing, whatever. I, I just like this method. It's a lot easier. Plus you um, don't have to worry about your bullets. I know I'm kind of going off topic again, but whatever. You might find something interesting, right? You never know. Um, I find for black powder, um, I like to I like to keep them fresh. I, when I'm I don't even lube my black powder projectiles until I'm ready to load them. Basically, it's a part of the operation. I'll flip this table ninety degrees so I have the press at my side, and then I have my function presses for loading over here. So that way, when I get to the bullet lubing and uh, seating and crimping stage, I take a fresh bullet straight from the whatever bucket. I'll put it in, I'll grease it and size it, and then I'll load it right then and there. I like doing that because then you have the most lube in there is when it's fresh. If you have a bunch in a bucket, a bunch of lubed because the, the uh, black powder projectiles usually have a big grease groove, and they tend to, um, when they move around together, they tend to like scrape and uh, kind of bump out a little bit of lube here and there, and you don't really get the best. Um, I'm just, particular like that you don't have, you, by all means if you want to do it that way go for it but I like to have as much lube in there as possible to keep that fouling soft so you can just keep shooting and you don't have to worry about your uh, firearms getting bound up or whatever so I like to do it one at a time um, but yeah back to this one here you're going to need a uh, gas check cedar it's a little device that just goes over top of the threads under here so you can, uh, it just sits in there. So you can uh, crimp your uh, your gas checks on. These little guys here. Little itty bitty copper uh, gas checks. And those, uh, you're going you're gonna to want those if you want to push a 30-30. You can, by all means, you could shoot subsonic 30-30 without a gas check and be fine. Um, but if you want to, if you want to push this projectile to around 2000, uh, feet per second, you're going to want a gas check. Otherwise you're going to have too much, um, pressure. You might have some blow past and it might melt the lead and like cause leading in your barrel and you'll have more consistency with a gas check. It'll be more even every time instead of, uh, your, your spread should be less with the gas check is what I'm trying to say. And you won't have as much mess in the barrel. Um, so I'm just kind of going over everything before I actually show you how it's done. 
it's it's not rocket science. It's just stuff I've learned over the over the period of time. Um, maybe you'll learn something like me. If you're loading a a Spitzer's type bullet and you don't have the correct top punch, I found a couple of tricks that you can do with that as well. Like I've taken this really thick wad, <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll place it over top of the. Uh, I'll take it over and put it over top of the Spitzer bullet like this, and then put it inside and then take it nice and easy. It doesn't deform it very much. And if it does just double up on your wads, another thing you can do is you can get your, uh, your top punch. You can get a, uh, a cone shaped one and you can actually fill this level with, um, hot glue. There's hair floating around. I got too many animals. You can fill this to the level point with hot glue and let it, um, then it acts as like a rubber bushing so that it doesn't deform your Spitzer bullets. Because even if it, if you just use a round nose thing for the Spitzer, it's going to it's gonna dull that point and it's going to make your bullets look a little shitty and it might not fly as straight if we're talking long range. So um, that's, that's one trick you can do. For me, I shoot lots. I want to say 90% of the bullets I shoot are flat nose bullets. So I actually took the liberty of taking a top punch, making it universal, and just grinding it flat. Grinding it flat and just giving it a quick polish so there's no rough burrs on it or nothing. So this is a universal punch. I'll use this punch from everything from uh, 38 Special uh, all the way. I'll use them for this 30-30 round. I'll use them for 45 Colt. I'll use them for the 4570. I'll use them for pretty much everything I have. The, the 4570 single shot that I have, I'll, I'll use this round one because it is a round nose bullet. But typically I can load all of my projectiles that I shoot with three different top punches. I'll have uh, the, 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 or sorry, with these two punches, the round nose one and the flat nose one. Those are pretty much the only ones I need. And then, like I said, I can, if I do decide to load a spitzer, I can use the wad or super glue or hot glue, sorry. So I'm going to have to put a top punch in here. I don't have one in here right now. I'm going to have to put the flat nose one in for this, for this projectile. So I'm just going to rest this on my head like I do. Otherwise, it'll fall all the way down. Give this a quick couple of loose turns. Stick it in there. If I can. Good grief. Holy smokes. You don't have to worry about it being oversized um, because I'm not pushing the bullet down inside the, the die body, the sizing die body, because most of the lube grooves on this projectile are on the bottom quarter or bottom half or third of the projectile. It's all down here. If I was shooting a wad cutter, not that, you know, let's just for an example, if I was making a wad cutter and I wanted to lube the wad cutter, then I would need a different top punch. I'd have to have a top punch that actually can fit inside the die body. But for here, we're fine. So I've already went and installed the gas jack. It, some of them don't snap on. These ones are kind of different. I, uh, these, aren't, uh, these aren't Hornady gas checks. These are uh, from a different company that I've ordered and found uh, online. I don't want to... I don't want to give their information away because I've had a lot of people um, taking advantage of certain things and I don't really like it and I wish people would stop doing it. But what they basically do is they'll, I'll leak information to somebody trying to help them. But what they end up doing is actually buying and posting on an auction or reselling for more to make a couple dollars. And I think that's kind of a asshole move so i've kind of stopped telling people where i get my stuff from i have my own connections and i'll tell close friends and stuff like that but um, i'm not going to tell just every joe schmo that i talk to about where stuff is um yeah these gas checks copper gas checks these ones kind of crimp on and they're actually in a way they stay on better than hornady's do I, if, I, if i could zoom in really far I can show you that it kind of has a round butt and it has a little bit of a lip that it can crimp into the bullet. So when I when I seat this, 
I'll show you after, and I, I, I'm, I'll try and do a close-up, maybe a picture of before and after what it looks like, and it's kind of cool. Um, I'll try and post that at some point, if I remember, by the end of the video. Okay, so to get this girl set up, um, I have to, I have always, every time I'm done a session, I always back the pressure off. So now I gotta, I gotta bring the pressure back on, and it's usually about 10 or so cranks. I usually do five cranks the forward way. Let's see if I can kind of zoom in here. Sorry about my hands. No, it's, I can't do it. I can't zoom in because it's on the face camera. <laughs> oh, another another thing I want to show you before I get started. This this might be a longer video than I thought. Um, it was supposed to be just a quick gas check seating bullet, but I kind of I always go overboard in my videos. I bring a file with me. Every time I do this, because once in a while, when you're casting bullets, you get uh, a little bit of a larger sprue on the back of the bullet or the front of the bullet, depending on which way the mold's facing. Uh, I'm trying to find an example. These ones are usually pretty good, but on the on the face here, sometimes you get a little bit of a, a, a dimple or a bubble. Like if your sprue plate comes loose and instead of cutting it straight, it'll kind of cut and lift a little bit and you'll have a bulge. Um, that's okay. I just take a file, I place the bullet flat on it, and I just do one or two passes, rotating it 90 degrees each time to get a nice flat, even surface. And then your gas check should sit on there a lot better. And you won't. And then when it's done, you won't have a little dimple. I, I'm like I said, I'm kind of. Uh, tedious when it comes to stuff like this. I like having everything as uniform as possible. That's just another tip that you can do. So you don't don't throw those out. You can always just whatever. And then when you're when you're done, you're looping and sizing. You, what I like to do is also weigh the bunches. I like to take an average and like of three different sections and have uh, let's say some of them get to 160 because they have lube in them and they have a gas check, right? So they're going to be a little heavier. So instead of 155, they might turn out to be like 160 or something like that. 160.5, 160.8. If there's a consistency between those two, I'll separate those two groups and have different weights. And I'll, that way I know when I'm shooting, okay, this is, you know, I'm just, that's just the way I am. I like. So when we start here, um, what you want to do is I found... Um, these gas checks, you don't almost, you don't almost don't even need this tool, this uh, gas check seeder uh, tool. Basically, it just allows the the ram to come down the, when the when the center of the die body comes down. Um, it basically doesn't allow it to continue to go down any farther. It'll it'll stop at a certain point, which basically what what happens is it lets you push and crimp your gas check on, but I find with these sweet gas checks, you don't even need to do that because because of their little round lip that they have on the side, when you push them in down inside the die, it crimps the gas check on the side. And then when it bottoms out, it, it pushes it to the bottom. And that way you have like a nice crimped, perfectly seated gas check every time. You, you don't need to use this, which actually saves a step. So I'm going to try this now. I haven't heated up this press, so we're going to see how this goes. Um, you don't want to push down hard. If it's not going, then maybe heat it up. If you, if you I don't have a heat pad because I find that they're a little bit retarded on how expensive they are for a heat pad. So like I said, I'll take a hair dryer and hit it with a hair dryer. Um, so I'm just going to try and get this down inside here. It's taking a little bit of... Uh, I might have to heat this up. But just from... Um, just from pushing it down a little bit inside, it's already kind of crimped the uh, gas check to the side of the bullet, which is kind of neat. But it didn't want to go very easily on me, so I don't want to flatten that bullet. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take a hair dryer and kind of soften this up. Because if you don't use it for a while, it kind of seizes up. And uh, if I heat it up, it'll soften it up. Um, another thing you can do if, if you're worried about your bullets getting squished, you could take a micrometer and just measure them and see if they're all being consistent or not. 
I know the easiest thing would do would be to just get a heat pad, but like I said, they're a little bit pricey. So um, I like to have a few Q-tips on hand too because sometimes you get a little bit of lube coming past the dye, and I just uh, I'll pick it out with this or I'll pick it out with a uh, with a dental pick. I, I've rounded the tip off of this one so I can get a better surface area and scrape it out. But I'm going to heat this up with a hair dryer and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've heated it up a little bit and now the bullet passes into the dye body just nicely. So now we have to work on where our grease level is. So I'm going to crank it a little bit, pull it up, check it out. You can see that there's grease entering the top grease groove and not the crimp groove. So you know that you, your level is correct. You got a little bit on the bottom, but that's fine. I usually wipe the bottom off anyways. And there's some on this side and some on this side, so we're close to the right pressure. So we'll send it through again. Just give it a little squeeze. Pop it back up. Not quite enough. You can see it on the bottom. At least I can. I know the camera angle kind of sucks, but bear with me. A little bit more grease, and there we go. That's her. So let me wipe off the, the excess here on the bottom. There. And you can also, if it'll focus, come on camera, um, you can see that the, you can't really see it because it's not focusing. I'll take a picture. Um, the sides of it are no longer round, they're flat because it crimped the gas check on the bullet, <clears throat> which is nice. And then we have a nice lubed and sized projectile. I like to just put them, <clears throat> man, my voice. I like to just put them uh, in a separate dish, off to the side, grab another gas check. You can put a little separate dish. I, I wouldn't put too much stuff on your bench, depending on how stable your bench is, but mine is not. It's kind of like a little island with a couple of loading things on them. Um, it's double bagged, sorry. I just don't trust uh, single bags. Take a few more gas checks, put them off to the side, and we'll do another one. So we got this one ready to go. Let's stick it in. Kind of center it out. Push it down. Give it just a little grease. Come back up. And there we go. Another ready to go 30-30 projectile for when you load. There's a little bit of lube on the bottom. I just kind of have a shop towel off to the side and I just kind of give it a little wipe both ways, kind of circular wipe, and then put it in a container. That way it's kind of nice and clean. Grab another one from the bucket like this. Check the bottom. I like to give it a quick, yeah, she's good to go. Grab a gas check, slap it on, stick it in, center it, push her down little grease back up and we're good to go there's another one see you can completely skip the pushing down stage because like I said it it crimps it to the side which is kind of nice give it a little wipe and put them in our little container I don't need to do too many of these because like I said I'm not loading them in large quantities um, I'm just doing five or ten at a time with different load charges just to when I have the rifle done I can test them out and then adjust them accordingly a little grease back up wipe the excess good to go and that's all it is that's all it takes to um, to lube and size and gas check your uh, your rifle projectiles. It doesn't take much. And then when you're done, make sure you back your grease pressure off. So just flip your whatever ratchet to the other way and make sure you back off your grease. I like to do it at least five or ten turns just to, just to have that empty void in there so that you don't have to worry about um, over time if you have too much pressure inside your die it's just gonna it's just gonna ooze through. It's gonna find its way through, and then next time you use it, you're gonna have just a mess of of crap stuck in your die. <laughs> so just a little bit easier uh, 
it'll your your die your die might look like this or or even worse when you pull it out. I like to clean them every time I pull it out. I just pulled this one out today. This was the 429. I was doing some 44 mag, and uh, I'll clean this up. I'll heat this up with a with a hair dryer, and then I'll dip it in a little bit of mineral spirits, and I'll completely clean it right up. And then I like to put a little shot of oil on when I'm done because the mineral spirits will dry out that bushing. The little O-ring, it'll dry it out. So I like to take a little bit of uh, like a shot of ballastol on a Q-tip and just give it a little run around. That way it keeps the O-ring kind of hydrated. Anyways, just uh, I, might, I might be a little too particular, but there's people that are probably worse than that. So um, I, I really wish I could tell you where I got these gas checks, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, if you're a, if you're a, a close friend of mine and you see this video, I'll I'll text you where I got them from if you if you don't have them and, and if you need them. Um, they're local, they're Canadian made, so it's kind of nice. Put these off to the side. And uh, so yeah, <clears throat> I'll take a picture and I can actually show you the difference between um, these gas checks and Hornady's gas checks. Um, these are 35 caliber and these are 30 caliber, but it'll kind of show you the similarities. And I'll, I'll also show you the, the bullet before and after it's, it's crimped or whatever you want to call it, just to have a difference there. So. Um, I think that's pretty much all for this video um, that I got. So I know it's a little bit long now. It's probably like around half an hour. But uh, hopefully you found something interesting. And uh, it'll be kind of nice here to post videos again. So they won't be as frequent. I think I'm not going to do them every two weeks. They might, I might just, they might be anywhere from one a week to one a month. I don't know. But stay tuned. And uh, I'll keep sending videos out there every so often. No schedule or nothing. Just kind of as I feel like it. Because like I said, it's a hobby. Not a source of income or whatever. Definitely not a source of income. Um, I make more money. Actually, I don't make any money off YouTube. So anyways. Dusty Tucker signing out. We'll see you next time.